Welcome in, listener. You're listening to a segment from the Slump Buster podcast with Juju and Dre. Find the full episode on Spotify, iTunes, the Google Play Store, or our YouTube channel. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. All right, so Patrick Chung is in the headline. So another New England Patriot in the headlines for the wrong reason. So uh, he was indicted on cocaine charges in New Hampshire. He's been a 10-year veteran, nine years he played with the Patriots, three-time Super Bowl champion. The the question I, I thought that came to mind when this issue happened is, if the Patriots hadn't won, hadn't been winning like they have consistently for the last 20 years, would we say this would probably be the most dysfunctional franchise in the NFL? You think about Aaron Hernandez, Spygate, Deflategate, Julian Edelman's PED suspension, Robert Kraft's special happy fun time massages, Tom Brady Belichick power struggles with the Jimmy G trade, a 45, 50 year old quarterback still in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh Gordon even right now he's back. Um, but Gordon being suspended, you know, for, for drug policy violations. and They won sign uh, Albert Hainsworth, too, who was a bust in Tennessee. Yeah, so I, I definitely think that they could be. The other thing, too, is Bill Belichick, has, he rules with the iron fist, right? Now, granted, he's probably behind some of these, right? So he's probably behind the plate gate, and, and they had the spy gate and all of that stuff. So... Bill Belichick is not innocent in all this, but because he rules with such like a strong, you know, fist and, and he's, you know, so like, Hey, nobody leaks anything to the media. You guys, you know, aren't going to talk, you know, about these issues with the media. I think he's been a big reason for why the Patriots, a lot of their dysfunction and issues aren't as talked about as they probably should be. Whereas, you know, look at my Steelers, right? Everybody's always talking about, oh, Big Ben said this, Antonio Brown. And that was only just like play-wise, like in, in on the field, right? Like we had our off the field issues with, you know, rape allegations and other things, right? But, um, but everybody's always talking about other teams' dysfunction, whereas Bill Belichick's teams, uh, you know, nobody really talks about them. Yeah, arguably the most dysfunctional team in the NFL. It's kind of like interesting if you really think about it those Super Bowl rings act more like hand sanitizer for this entire like franchise, <laughs> the way that like we just 99.9% .9 of the germs are wiped away, but that 0.1% kind of lingers in the background. And that's these like issues I specifically talk about. We really only see about it when a new meme comes out. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what I think is, what I think is interesting is especially with a lot of these seasons, that they have blatantly got caught cheating a lot of times and yet there's never really been like a very big punishment for the team as a whole um and so do you think for a lot of a lot of these seasons right with like spygate deflategate and all that should they have been punished more i believe if i'm not mistaken they've lost draft picks in the past i mean what are, what are you gonna do short of taking away the franchise from the crafts or something which i thought was going to happen after Robert's mm -hmm. allegation, but <laughs> that kind of got really got swept under the rug fast. Like we haven't even talked about. Just a note on Robert Kraft: How is is it a power move or is it a sad move that they literally had the AFC Championship game in Kansas City? He flew down from Boston to Miami that morning, got busted in this sex traffic ring, and still ended up back there to see them beat the Chiefs that night. <laughs> I don't know. But part of that could have been like, hey, I got a whole bunch of money. Let me out of jail so I can go go back. That's what I think it was, right? It's like, hey, look, I got as much money as I need to get out of this place. Yeah. Um, it's <laughs> well, crazy. Well, one thing that I will say is interesting, though, about Robert Kraft is he was one of the big backers behind the Jay-Z partnership. And I wonder if it's because he's gotten so much flack for, um, for one, the massages, right, <laughs> down south. Yeah. A game respect game, you know, Jay Z yes. and Robert Kraft just Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> and Robert Kraft has also been very open politically and I and I don't want to bring politics in, into this uh into the podcast, but I will say is he differs very much from, you know, some of the players that are kneeling. And so I wonder I wonder if that was an effort for Robert Kraft to sort of save face, right? Especially for his franchise too. Well, you know, Robert Kraft actually has a great dynamic with a lot of players who disagree with him politically. Yeah. With his, his relationships with a lot of players on this New England roster. 
and even just in the Boston community as a whole. So, you know, we'll, it's only time will tell whether or not, you know, this has another happy ending for him. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how the Patriots do. But it's not just Patrick Chung who was in trouble this week. Boogie Cousins was in trouble this week. He was issued an arrest warrant in Alabama. So third-degree harassing communications, domestic violence misdemeanor. The tape, the tape came out with TMZ. Of course, you know, we have to preface, this is all allegations. I mean, but it's pretty damning. I mean, if he's found guilty of this, it's minimum a year in prison. Yeah, and, and so I feel... And run away if he drops the soap because he has a torn ACL. <laughs> so, I mean, I just feel so bad for Boogie Cousins, right? Like, this is really his, at least to my knowledge, his first big issue out like off the court issue right outside of the locker room and and people I think Boogie Cousins got sort of a bad rap as oh he's not a good locker room guy and he he does play very tough right and and he will foul you hard and he will talk crap to you and stuff like that and so I think he always got this bad rap as being a bad guy um but now like this issue it it sort of adds to you know that sort of notion of oh boogie cousins is a bad guy like and now if he is able to come back from from his injury right like the teams even want to really be involved and so his he went from being a potential max player to basically being a, a bet minimum and i think that's part of you know maybe why these things are happening and he's acting the way he is right because if he's fully healthy he's practicing with the lakers I don't think he's out in Alabama doing this stuff. Like, I think he's got his head on straight, but now well, I don't know where he's at mentally. Okay, so the full story behind it is apparently it's just basically a disagreement over the phone with his baby mama here, Chrissy West. So apparently he was upset. You know, these emotions are very highly dr emotionally driven. Basically, she refused to allow his son to attend his wedding, which took place this past Saturday on the 24th, August 24th. And it caused an emotional reaction. And then suddenly, again, three days later, we find the tapes out there on TMZ. That's why these things are always so messy. Like, no one really wins in these situations. Like, we go back to the Pyreek Hill tapes that we talked about last week. They were very out of context. And we still don't know what happened in this issue. This one, you know, is just a guy who's angry. He's upset. If he would actually done any of this to this woman, obviously we know that the crime <laughs> that would have conveyed, but you know, yeah, yeah. this is, you know, this is a guy just saying some crazy stuff because he just got told I can't have my son, which is always brings out a reaction in people. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. And, and like I said, one, it's an emotional time for him, right? Like he just, he, he's suffered three major injuries all within the last year. And like I said, he went from earning you know, tens of millions of dollars to earning millions, still good amount of money, but that has an emotional toll on you. Went from being one of the best players in the world to now everybody's saying, hey, if he comes off the bench and can you know, sort of get back in production, that's good. And then on top of, like you said, the mother of his child basically saying, hey, you're not going to be able to see your son. And the bond between a father and son especially – is super strong right like every I think every single one of my friends at least right that that has a child or is is planning on having a child here soon they're all hoping for a son like that's what every guy says like everybody loves their daughters of course every father loves their daughters but every guy is like hey I want a son I want a son just because you're super close with you know having your own you know boy and mm -hmm. and so the fact that he's not able to to get to see him right and and have him attend a wedding is is awful for him. Split custody, it's just, it's a rough lifestyle. Like any parent or child that's ever had to go through it knows that the emotional burden that comes with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just never a winning situation for anyone, really. No one ever leaves those situations truly happy. 